Cortes. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new handheld console coming to the market known as the Absolute. So this was actually announced a couple months ago and I did a quick video just kind of showing off their website and everything that this thing's going to offer. And since then, the company was kind enough to send over one of their prototype units. And so far, I've actually been having a really good time with it. This video is kind of a first look. We're not going to go into uh, performance figures and things like that with this one. I will have a full review coming up in the next couple days, so keep an eye out on the channel. But in this one, we'll be taking a look at the specs, a little bit of gaming, and emulation on this new device. So first things first here, really do like the design. I think it feels great in the hand, and it's a lot thinner than I thought it was going to be. We've got a beautiful 1080p 7-inch display with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 dual stereo speakers, all the buttons we need to play our favorite PC games and Android games. And in fact, when it comes to the analog sticks and triggers, this thing does use hall sensors, so we don't have to worry about drift and we get really great input. Ergonomics are awesome. As you can see, we've got these curves on the rear here, which keeps that middle really thin, but this really does hug the palm of your hand when you're holding it for long periods of time. And of course, since it's using hall sensors here with the rear triggers, they are fully linear. On the bottom here, we do have a micro SD card slot, 3.5mm audio jack, and our USB Type-C input. And moving around to the top, we've got our power button and our volume rockers. That's about it. This is a passively cooled system, there's no fan built in, and it runs Android. This is really meant to be a streaming slash cloud gaming slash Android gaming machine, and it does a great job for what we have here. Some of you might notice the launcher is very reminiscent of the one in the Logitech G Cloud, and I think that's exactly what they were going with here. Actually, I've seen a few companies use this same launcher in the past couple months, bringing their handhelds to the market. But yeah, I mean, it does work well. Very easy interface to kind of navigate. And what you're seeing right now are kind of the basic settings for the handheld itself. But from here, we can get right into the full Android settings. And if you wanted to use this in kind of tablet mode and just have the basic Android interface, you could always use it that way if you don't like using the launcher. Like I mentioned in this video, we're not going over the full unit, but I did want to test out some gaming and some emulation on this device. But before we get into it, I did want to go over the specs real quick. And when it comes to the CPU, this has the MediaTek MT8365. This is a quad-core CPU at 2 GHz, 4 GB of RAM, a 7-inch 1080p IPS display at 60 Hz, and it's 103.4% sRGB, so we do have a little bit of saturation. I think it looks really good. We've got 5 GHz memo Wi-Fi. It would have been nice to see Wi-Fi 6 here, but I know they wanted to keep the cost down. And from what I've tested so far with streaming from my local PC, GeForce Now, and uh, even xCloud, it's working out really well. Like I mentioned, the analog sticks and the triggers are using hall sensors here. Plus, we've got Z-axis linear motors built in and a 5200 milliamp hour battery with 8 plus hours of battery life. And yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Even with the brightness set to around 80%, this doesn't pull that much power. The first thing I wanted to take a look at was some Steam Link game streaming, and you might notice this looks a lot like the Steam Deck interface, and that's because the latest beta of Steam does allow us to use this uh, gamepad UI. Actually, I believe it might be official now. I'm not sure if you'd need to be on the beta or not, but either way, I mean, we've got that same interface here, and in my opinion, it works out much better on a handheld like this. I think it's a lot more controller friendly than the older big picture mode. And if you're not familiar with Steam Link or Moonlight, this is a bit different from cloud gaming because I'm actually streaming from my own PC right now. Now you could do this out and about if you want to. You could connect to a hotspot on your phone or something like that and connect to your PC at the house. But right now I have the Absolute and my gaming PC connected to the same network and I'm using a five gigahertz router. I've actually got a pretty decent router here. And when it comes down to it, this is really playable. To tell you the truth, you know, playing something like this with a good connection at 60 FPS, it's kind of hard to tell that you're even streaming a game because you're on that same network. You're not streaming from a server thousands of miles away, and input latency is very, very minimal. Miles Morales, I'm maxed out on my gaming PC, and that's really going to depend if your computer can handle it or not. But we're at 1080p streaming to this device at 60 FPS. And you know, it doesn't take a lot of power to use Steam Link or even Moonlight. That's why the old uh, Steam Link itself really didn't have a super powerful CPU anyway. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was some Xbox Cloud Gaming. And with this, I'm using the Game Pass app, but you could use the uh, xCloud or the Cloud Gaming Beta app if you want to. But Game Pass also has access to in-home streaming. So if you have your Xbox set up like that, you could do just like we would with uh, Steam Link. So you'd stream directly from that device. 
but we're going to be testing out cloud gaming, so this is connecting to a server that's probably thousands of miles away from me right now. If you've ever tested out any kind of cloud gaming on your phone, you know a lot of the performance and latency really comes down to your internet connection and definitely the router. So from in-house right now, I'm actually connected to my Wi-Fi 6 network, and we do have a pretty good internet service provider. So I personally haven't run into a lot of the issues that some people have with cloud gaming, be it uh, using GeForce Now or even xCloud here. And this is one of my favorites. I love playing my favorite Xbox games on my phone. Now, if you're not into the Xbox and you've got a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, you can always use Remote Play. As you can see, I'm actually just controlling my PS5 right here from the handheld. It's connected over Wi-Fi, and we've got full control over everything the PlayStation 5 can do. And keep in mind, this works with the PlayStation 4 also. It'll do 720p on the regular PS4, or if you've got the PS4 Pro, you can do up to 1080p. And I just went with something simple. I'm still right in the middle of the new God of War, and I kind of didn't want to ruin it for myself. So I just went with this game here, easy to get into. Looks really good here at 1080p. And, you know, if you've got a PlayStation 5, you've probably played this game. But if you just kind of put it down because you had another game, you need to play it again. This is actually really, really fun to go through. And all of the music is super catchy. And the final game streaming app I wanted to take a look at was GeForce Now. Interface, super snappy. We're right in the app. I've got everything connected, and I've been with GeForce Now for a little while now. I'm actually uh, with the Founders Edition, so I do have access to RTX, so I think I can use a 3080 from their servers. And I just went with Cyberpunk 2077. Great input here. Not a lot of latency from their servers right now. And GeForce Now can be hit or miss like a lot of these cloud apps, but if you've got a decent internet connection and a pretty good router, then you should have a good time with games like this. And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if GeForce Now streams at 720 or 1080, but if this is at 720p, the compression is great here. I mean, it's super clean. And before I wrap this video up, I did want to take a look at a little bit of emulation. We're going to go light here because we don't have a super powerful CPU, but first up, we've got some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And yeah, we're at 60 FPS. Looking really good here, and in my full review, we will be doing some D-pad testing and things like that with fighting games in Android. And the final one I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of PSP emulation using PPSSPP. 1x resolution, Vulcan back end, got some Ratchet and Clank running here, and this did natively run at 30 FPS on the PSP. And that's exactly what we're running at here. Now you gotta keep in mind, this is not a super powerful device, so I don't think we're gonna get great GameCube and PS2 emulation in Android. But if you've got a PC set up using Moonlight or Steam Link, you could always stream your favorite emulators from that. Obviously, a lot of people are gonna be comparing this to the Logitech G Cloud, so I wanted to give you a quick look here. This is a thinner, sleeker device, and we've also got those hall sensors with the joysticks and the analog triggers, but there are a few more differences, and we'll go over that in my full review video. So overall, I'm really liking the design that they've come up with here. It's very comfortable to hang on to for long periods of time. It's pretty lightweight, and uh, overall, I mean, I think it's the perfect size for a handheld like this. Screen looks really great. Awesome controls. I do need to mess around with this D-pad a little more when it comes to fighting games just to get a feel for it. But uh, again, I will have a full review video coming up in the next couple days. I definitely want to spend a little more time with it. And I also wanted to show off tablet mode here. So if you're not into using the stock launcher, you could always go through Google Play and download a third-party launcher if you want to. Or use it in tablet mode. And this is going to work just like any Android phone or tablet would. And I do think this would come in handy for using different applications that aren't really meant to be used with a controller. But we have also got full mapping software right out of the box with this unit. So obviously, an Android-based cloud gaming device isn't for everybody, and I completely understand that. But there are people out there that would love to have a device like this at a lower cost than some of the other stuff that's on the market right now. And I think that's what they're trying to accomplish here. And even though there's more powerful handhelds out there, I still think that there's a market for these as long as they can get that price right. So if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a link to their website and Discord in the description below. You can head over to their Discord and ask some questions if you want to. But definitely keep an eye on the channel because my full review video is coming up and I'd like to know from you, what do you want to see running on this when that video comes? Let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.